Infectious disease is paradigmatic of one of the great challenges of the 21st century. Uh, it's the result of living in a global community where we're interconnected, where events in one part of the world affect the whole world. The elephant in the room is the human being, the human factor, how we choose to behave. So in order to address these problems requires not just technological or technical solutions, it requires us to address ourselves and indeed to set new norms of behaviour, to create new concepts of collective responsibility, to understand the balance between freedom, autonomy and uh, public health, well-being, privacy. Balancing all of these values at a global level requires a new ethics and new insight into human psychology to understand how we can effectively cooperate at a global level uh, and address these great challenges. The reason we need to be collectively responsible for infectious disease is because of the way they spread from one person to another. So if I break my leg, how I behave has really no impact on whether or not you're going to break your leg. But if I catch flu, then how I behave really affects your chances of catching flu. So that's why collective responsibility is really a big issue for the spread of infections. So within zoology, there's a very strong tradition of mathematical modelling of the spread of infectious disease. Um, and that's what our, our team brings to, to this shared effort. Uh, so what's the, the, the power of that is that we can build scenarios that are really quantitatively consistent. So we can say, well, let's assume the following thing changed. How much difference would that make? Well, one of the things I think which is kind of unique about our program actually is the combination of disciplines which are involved. Very often in the case of public health and infectious disease, uh, you have combinations of people from medical sciences, from, from public health, along with people from social sciences, from, for instance, economists, uh, sociologists, and very often anthropologists. But what's rare, um, if not unique, is really to have a historian involved. And I think you know, having, uh, having the, the kind of the, you know, the kind of depth of analysis, as well as actually looking at what's happening in a, in a society at the present time is very important because it, societies change over time. Historians understand the reasons why societies and cultures change. And change is obviously something that we want to bring about. So we have to understand the conditions which can bring about change. Today, we have the means for controlling infection. It's really our behaviour and our choices in it, as individuals, often within a capitalist market system, that create the massive problems that we face.